Uh, lovely to be on. My name is David Hall, Managing Director of Cloud IT, and uh, we've got an excellent hour uh, lined up for you yeah. at the moment. So let me just share my screen and we'll make a start. So uh, I'm, I'm joined by Peter here, co-founder of Clip Train and also Microsoft MB, MVP. Peter, just want to say hello to everyone for us. Hi, greetings, everyone. Great to be with you uh, this, this morning for me, but it's afternoon for you folks. So, um, yep, J. Peter Brzezzi uh, from Clip Train. Brilliant. Thanks ever so much, Peter. And we're looking forward to your session later on uh, about sort of uh, digital skills, the adoption of them within an organisation and how to approach that. We've been doing this for quite a few years and uh, you can see pockets of success in places. And obviously our goal is to really drive that success, drive the productivity. And Peter's got some great takeaways about that as well. Um, so looking forward to hearing that later on. And we're also joined by Tim Thurston as well uh, from uh, uh, Team Doctor. Uh, Tim, do you want to say hello? Good morning, everybody. Hope you're all well. Actually, it's good afternoon now, isn't it? So, yeah, keeping me up to date and trying to uh, keep the time zones consistent. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, thanks very much for having me on uh, this webinar. David, looking forward to uh, talking about Team Doctor, what we do and uh, how we can hopefully help and give you some ideas as to how you can improve the well-being and engagement of your teams. Excellent. Thanks, uh, Tim. And, um, you know, Tim and Peter, both organisations we work closely with uh, around digital skills and uh, obviously uh, in the workplace as well. And we're also joined by Ryan Jones, who some of you might know as one of the customer success managers at Cloudy, uh, who will be giving a short overview of our revamped e-learning library, which is one of the reasons we put this uh, event together. So, Ryan, do you want to say hello? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Brilliant. Thanks, Ryan. So great. So um, just an overview of the session. Uh, we're going to be talking about our digital skills drive, our digital level up program for town and parish councils. Uh, we've got our um, digital skills academy and cloudy learning compliance hub, which we're really excited to announce. And that's useful for cloudy customers. You get it as part of the package of cloudy or for non customers. It's not a problem. You can still have it and have access to that as well. And then we talk about all of our digital skills drive that we've got around online webinars, training and events that are available for, for councils who are and aren't customers uh, with Cloudy. Obviously got Peter's session, Tim's, and then Ryan's going to do a sort of short session at the end. So a really busy hour lined up and hopefully some useful takeaways for everyone. So uh, digital skills is very important to us here at Cloudy. Uh, we truly believe uh, to be more productive or, you know, we have to invest in your team, your technology, and being productive is key. Uh, if you're not productive, you're not being efficient, you're not delivering services in the most cost effective way. And that is the most important thing now, you know, if prices going up, right, costs going up, um, you know, budgets are being squeezed and doing more with what you've got is key. And uh, technology and people are probably one of the biggest factors to do that. So we, we launched um, at the practitioners conference, uh, our digital level up, level up agenda that was actually last year um, and that was really exciting we had Linda Chandler from Microsoft talk about uh, you know smart uh, communities smart economies smart cities smart parishes uh, really interesting session Linda's put a blog on our website which if anyone you get a chance to look at please do you can snap the QR code there um, but we, you know we launched that last year and then at MIA this year we, we we really pushed that home and started to combine that with all the products and services we sell such as decisions etc as well so we, we're really focusing now on our, on our digital skills drive and have just rebranded and relaunched a lot of new products and services at Cloudy and they're all online and we're launching them properly at the practitioners conference uh, in 2024 next year, which is really exciting. So we've got a whole new redesigned learning library website uh, and events lined up for customers and non-customers to engage in. So digital skills are key, and which is why we've assembled such an esteemed lineup of guests to come and talk. And we'll go through the portal and the services we've got in a second. So, um, so we've assembled a, a kind of Clark's Digital Academy here, uh, and we've got three levels to that academy. We've got the fundamentals, the advanced, and the AI. So uh, we find a lot of organisations at the the fundamentals stage, which is basically you know the basics of three six five. We're talking SharePoint, OneDrive, Teams, 
Uh, a lot of organizations don't even realize they've got, to be honest, uh, SharePoint. They just use their file server, uh, but they might use their emails from 365. But um, we, we're trying to hold council's hands through that process uh, and do it in a sensitive way that's for the staff and councillors, um, but a way that, you know, sort of takes into account all the other busy schedules that they've got going on as well. So we've got the fundamentals, which is the basics, co-authoring, online collaboration, uh, sharing documentation correctly. Um, and anyone who's a customer of Cloudy would know that we, we deliver our sessions in this way, where we have our fundamental sessions delivered and then access to our advanced after that, which is where we start to train you on the apps that are included in your 365 environment, apps like Forms or Bookings or Planner, OneNote. Uh, these apps can you know, make you more productive or allow you to be more productive um, and you know, allow you to, as I mentioned earlier, do more with less ultimately, which is what we're trying to do. Um, and we, we're getting to a really exciting period at the moment with the, the launch of AI. AI has been a big thing this year, the launch of ChatGPT. I think it's made the headlines massively. Um, but and we do see a lot of organisations now using AI, ChatGPT, um, to really create those shortcuts and do all the heavy lifting for them allowing them to you know create content whether it's uh, for social media or, or for uh, inf communications that go out like documentation very swiftly or emails um, but it still requires clearly a lot of uh, uh, sort of uh, reviewing before it goes live but it can do the heavy lifting for you and Microsoft are launching their co-pilot which is the chat GPT version of 365 um, they're launching it as an early access preview in November I think general availability early next year in February. Um, but because it will be heavily integrated into your 365 environment, it will do, be able to do some really clever things. Um, stuff such as the creation of documentation, replying of emails, all these things need to be clearly reviewed before you send them. But but using this sort of this technology can really allow you to accelerate you know, the use of your time, make sure you're spending your time in the most efficient way possible. Uh, we're already doing it here at Cloudy, and I know people are already doing it using 365. Uh, there's some great people on the, sec on the circuit. Becky Walsh, she's uh, done a number of sessions with the SLCC, specifically aimed at uh, comms. Um, but uh, our, co my, our colleague, Steve, uh, Steve Walker, has got a number of webinars which are coming up, which are available online, talking about AI for 365 as well. Um, and all that content is available actually in our uh, Cloudy eLearning Hub as well, which is really exciting, which I will give you a short overview of a bit later on as well. So we've got our sort of Clark's Digital Academy. We've got various stages of that, fundamentals, advanced, and then AI. And uh, if you're a customer of Cloudy, we did have those sessions as part of your onboarding, but we've also got them available on our website. So you can just jump in and use those as well. And we'll give you a short overview of that a bit later. We've also got our learning hub as well, which is a, 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 a portal where you can log into and access lots of videos and content to help you with the adoption of digital skills at your council. Uh, it's a really exciting um, uh, sort of growth area for us. We believe we can really benefit a lot of councils. We've got our policy manager built into that as well, which will allow you to automate your policies at the council to your staff and to your members. Uh, and then also we've got our learning modules as well, which are for cybersecurity, HR, business productivity, and also products like Tim's uh, product from um, Clip, uh, uh, Team Doctor as well, which is really exciting, which Tim will talk about a bit later on. So this is part of our digital skills. We've got two main components here. The other component is our online training and workshops. So uh, councils will be able to jump onto these fundamental workshops, which are about two hours long, um, and they're designed to just get the basics right, hands-on practical uh, workshops. Um, uh, and then the sort of deep dive sessions which you've put together, which are around the specific apps, whether it's Planner, OneNote, Bookings, uh, Forms. Um, they're 45 minutes long. They're free for Cloudy customers. If you're not a Cloudy customer, there is a cost involved, but it's still very good value for money and will hopefully enable you to feel a bit more comfortable and confident about how those apps could be used in your council to be more efficient. And they're available right now on our website at events and training as well. So that's part of our framework for, for digital skills adoption at councils. Uh, everyone who's joined this as a customer of Cloudy, we've got a reviewed your, your environment and it's all ready to go. And Ryan would be more than happy to have a session with you afterwards to go through that and help you create a strategy at your council to drive that adoption. Um, there is not only a sort of um, 
uh, a portal for your members of staff, but also for the admin as well. And there's the ability to gamify and actually build in the adoption of 365 or the adoption of digital skills into maybe your HR policy as well, so that staff are continuously a, a bit have access to the digital skills they need. So there's a lot there that Cloudy is doing, and Ryan will give you a short overview a bit later on. So uh, I'm really excited to introduce Peter now, who's going to do his session on uh, the 21st century communication and collaboration, but party like it's 1999, but work like it's 2023. So I'm really looking forward to hearing this one myself. Um, so Peter, if you want to just give a bit of background about yourself and introduce yourself to everyone on the call, that'd be fantastic. Sounds great. I'll share my screen. And you should be able to see that now. Yeah, it's coming up. Perfect. All right. Perfect. Uh, so the title of this session is is meant to be a little bit cheeky, you know, just to catch attention. Um, but it really revolves around buying into the Microsoft uh, modern workplace concept of 21st century communication and collaboration. Uh, before we jump into that, I'll introduce myself. So as was mentioned, my name is J. Peter Brzezzi. I'm a co-founder and the chief content officer for uh, Clip Training. And uh, I'm an eight-time awarded Microsoft MVP for Exchange and then Office 365. I'm working on my ninth award now. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with what that is, it's an award that Microsoft gives to individuals who are uh, participating in the community, assisting the community in various ways. In my case, it was because I was a technical author and speaker and journalist. And so, you know, in, in, over the years, I've, I've spent many years helping the Microsoft community to uh, adapt and adopt new technologies that Microsoft puts out there. And that's going to play into the discussion today quite heavily. Uh, currently, I'm writing for Techie Gurus, which is kind of a startup site that uh, has a group of MVPs working together to start something new. So that's me in a nutshell. To start things off, I'm going to jump right into an illustration. Um, imagine we lived in a world where we had flying cars. Well, you might say, well, we're there. We're, 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 we're getting there. Uh, and we are. But let's say we were a little further down the road. and now, as a company, let's say the CEO decided, I'm going to buy everyone in the company a flying car. You know, traffic is just so bad that if we had flying cars, I know everyone could get to work better. And then it would lower their stress levels. They'd get to work happier. Um, and so you have this car that can drive on the road, but when necessary, can fly, bring you right to work or other places. And all the employees get this incredible car. And you find out after two months, six months, a year, that everyone is still driving to work every day. You might have a couple that, that fly here and there. Uh, you might have a few that use it every day as a flying car, but the majority of your people are still driving to work. Why? <laughs> you, you'd wonder why. Why is this? Well, um, maybe they're afraid. Um, maybe they, they just don't understand the value. Um, maybe they never quite bought into the concept that this was really going to improve their lives in any way. Uh, and so that's kind of what happens with people when it comes to technology, especially uh, communication and collaboration technology of today. Uh, that here we've provided all of these great tools for people to use, and maybe we've bought into the concept that this is going to benefit them. Their lives are going to be better. It's going to improve the company, sure, but it's also going to improve their overall working lives. Uh, if we believe that and we've given them these tools and then we find out that they're not using them, it's similar to providing something as cool as a flying car, at least to me. <laughs> now, uh, let's just revisit the past for a moment. I think it helps for us to grasp the, the present and future. Uh, you might remember, depending on you know your age and the uh, time you've spent in the industry, uh, you might remember a time when Microsoft released new things every three years. Every three years, uh, and sometimes even longer, we'd get a new operating system. We'd get new flavors of Office. There would be, if you're in the server world, there would be new flavors of server, um, whether it was Windows Server or some of the uh, uh, tool-based servers like Microsoft Exchange Server and SharePoint and so forth every three years. That gave people plenty of time to uh, get used to that cadence. And even still, um, how did people feel when, let's say, IT finally convinced the decision makers, hey, we need to uh, provide new laptops, new desktops with new operating systems, new versions of Office. How did they feel over the years? Um, 
So you were working with Windows XP, someone gave you a brand new system with Windows Vista. Not well received <laughs> as an operating system. Um, I used to joke that every flavor of Microsoft operating system, every other one was good, uh, similar to Star Trek movies. So uh, Windows XP was great, Windows Vista not so great. <laughs> Windows Vista SP1, better, but uh, it just kind of leapfrogged. Windows 7, great. Windows 8, hated, hated by most. So it, it just leapfrogs one after the other. Um, and so this is kind of what we saw. The same thing with Office. Uh, Office for years was the same thing until they released Office 2007, the ribbon interface. And so uh, you could get used to this cadence, but how is it today? And how, is, how will it be going forward? Um, the way it is today is that the cadence, sometimes it's not every three years. It feels like it's every three days or every day. Windows 11, Office 365, or Microsoft 365, new tools like Teams and OneDrive and Copilot now. And uh, I mean, it could be overwhelming overwhelming to the end users. Um, and you could see how that fear, that feeling of being overwhelmed, um, if not if not resolved, people, when they come into work, they want to do today what they did yesterday. They don't necessarily buy into the idea that uh, these tools are going to advance and improve their lives. They're not going to improve their communication and collaboration, their cooperation. No, they, they believe, uh, I just want to get my job done today the way I did it yesterday. We need to fix that. Now, Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, um, he made some really good points. Um, he said, focus on how to improve usage. Focus first on usage and the financial results will naturally follow, right? How do we focus on usage? How do we help folks to uh, truly adopt the applications? How do we get them to buy in to the Microsoft 365 value of communication, collaboration, and cooperation? Um, so. The 21st century work mindset has to change. And in some cases it is, in some cases others are still holding on. But people need to work more collaboratively. Um, teams can be spun up almost daily. Um, and I don't just mean Microsoft Teams within Teams, but just groups of people working together. And because uh, even prior to the pandemic, but as a result of the pandemic, we've sped up quite a bit. Um, in fact, Satya Nadella said very early on in the pandemic that we've increased our digital adoption. Um, we've leapfrogged, you know, over a year's worth of time because we were forced to. Um, and so now people, they do work anywhere, anytime on multiple devices. And the challenge here is that People need to adopt the technology that's been provided. Now, here's the truth. Microsoft will not reduce pricing just because your customers use less features, right? Um, think about it like a car. Uh, you know, you, you might get a car, uh, let's, let's say a, an electric car, a Tesla. It has all these great features, self-driving and so forth. And, uh, and so you have these features that are there. And so at the end of the month, you, you tell your, your Tesla dealership, um, I'm only going to pay you uh, a third of, uh, of, what I owe because I didn't really use all of those features. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. It's the same thing with our Microsoft licenses. Um, in some cases, you may want to right size your licensing. And what does that mean? Well, right sizing um, for some, it means changing your license structure down to the level of the users. All right. And this is not one that I'm in favor of, but let's say you have E3 licenses um, or, you know, uh, higher levels of business standard licenses and, and so forth and uh, business premium. And you say, you know, a lot of my people, they're not adopting the tools, um, so I want to pay less. I'll just right size downward. I encourage instead that you right size by providing uh, more training to assist the end users to adopt the technology. Uh, don't remove those features and those technologies from their world. No, if you've truly bought into the 21st century modern workplace mindset that Microsoft has put forward, then you want to increase their ability to adopt these tools. And the, and the key to that is for them to feel comfortable. And the key to that is of course, training. Training that they can you know enjoy. Now, before you can provide any kind of training, you need visibility. So Microsoft has an adoption score. Um, this is built right into the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, and it allows you the ability to see how people are working. Um, you can see if they're using the meetings properly, if they're engaging, um, if they're sharing content and they're collaborating on content. And, and there's a very simple test for this, but the adoption score really helps to, for you to see it in an organization-wide scenario. But I'll give you the scenario that you know you can look for, and that is... 
you know, back in 1999, see, there's the, the theme coming back here. Back in 1999, if you wanted to collaborate on a document, you could, uh, let's say a PowerPoint presentation, you could send that PowerPoint presentation in an email uh, to your colleague or colleagues and say, hey, work this up. Uh, here's what I have. Let me see what you have. They might make some changes. They might save another version, send you the new version with their initials at the end, and then you have to combine those versions and you know, see what they're offering. And uh, it, it, that sounded great in 1999. That was cutting edge, right? Uh, but that would be archaic today because if you're using Teams, you can drop that same document into a Teams collaboration chat with multiple people. Uh, you can all work on that document at the same time and you can uh, you can see the changes live in real time. Why would you email it back and forth? Why would you have multiple versioning that's unnecessary? Behind the scenes, Teams uses SharePoint to keep track of all of this. So uh, you might say, well, that sounds really great. See, now that's 2023 communication and collaboration. Um, and if your people are not doing that, if they're instead still sharing documents through email that should be worked on in Teams, then it's just a, a real simple uh, gauge uh, thermometer to tell you what the overall adoption is of M365 in your organization. And of course, this adoption score is another one to assist in that regard. So how do you move the needle here? How do you get people to uh, adopt even more so? Well, again, uh, having help from training or an enablement platform, this could be uh, a real important key. An enablement platform can help to coordinate content and training programs. And we're talking about M365 adoption for communication and collaboration, sure. But there are a lot of other subjects that are very important these days. Uh, security is a perfect example. Um, having a way to elevate the end users, right? To give them uh, greater vigilance. I know we always call it security awareness. I don't particularly like that term. Um, I think just because you're aware of something doesn't necessarily mean you're on guard against it. Um, and I think in, a, in the security world where we're constantly being attacked, uh, we need to have a more proactive stance. So I prefer security vigilance, the ability for your people not only to know what threats may come their way, but to be prepared to defend themselves against those threats. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to accomplish that. Uh, you're aware of all these various tools that uh, provide fake phishing simulation. They uh, they get the fake phishing email. Um, I argue that that those types of tools may be doing more harm than good at this point, um, because ultimately the companies that create them have to just continue to get better and better and better. And so, you know, if you're let's say you know trying to play a game of tennis, in tennis there's one ball. Uh, but if you're being hit with multiple balls coming your way and only one of them is real, the others are fake, uh, you never know which one you you know you should hit. <laughs> so I think that sometimes having a variety of fake phishing emails coming your way, um, you're eventually going to uh, get a real email. And you know if it's done well, and these days, those organizations, those uh, hacker organizations are using chat GPT as well. So they could hit you up with something um, and ultimately it'll get through. So training is really the key, a zero trust mentality, helping people to learn Microsoft 365 adoption, greater security vigilance, and a variety of other tasks to assist them in their day-to-day -day lives, especially within an organization. There might be a variety of different employee enablement uh, training and, and uh, assistance that can be, be provided there as well. So to pretty much sum up um, how to accomplish the goal of 21st century communication and collaboration. We've already talked about training, right? So that's number one, provide easy access to enablement tools. And uh, and certainly, you know, with, with those types of tools, it has to be something that's fun for the end user because again, <laughs> Uh, just like the old days when the IT admin would provide a new desktop or lap laptop with new operating system, new uh, technology, the end user just wanted to do today what they did yesterday. And now you've interrupted their world. Um, they don't love you for that. <laughs> you know, many times they'll hate you for it. So um, how do you avoid that? Early training, not just, hey, here are some new tools and here's some training for it. No, if you could give them that training a little earlier, that would be better. If you can give them a heads up that something's coming so that they can prepare, um, you know, that's just that's just understanding people's fears. Um, people fear change, especially with technology. And depending on the age of your workforce as well, um, that change can make them feel very unsettled. Um, and especially if there's a mixture of workforce, young and old, uh, they, they may feel 
that the younger generation is going to get it faster. They're not, and, and it puts their job in jeopardy. All of that is playing into their minds every day. Take it away. Take the stress away by providing the tools to help them to adopt even prior to the release of new solutions. Um, so that's key. Number two, though, locate and engage internal champions. There are always going to be those people who they love, and, it, and it's all a variety of different age groups, too. Um, we, we always think, oh, the younger ones. No, not always true. Um, you need to find the internal champions for adoption. The way you do that is by using tools like Microsoft's Adoption Score to find, locate those people that are already using the uh, communication and collabor collaboration solutions like Teams and OneDrive and so forth um, internally. You can also use the uh, employee enablement and training solution to see who's watching the training, um, who's leveling up um, on their own organically. Now, now granted, a, a good platform should also allow you the ability to have drip campaigns, learning paths, and so forth, ways to, um, to drive learning. In some cases, mandate it. Right, but depending on your company culture, some company cultures don't like to mandate training. They prefer for it to be a bit more organic or incentivized. Right, so you have mandated, you have um, incentivized, where it's encouraged, and then you have the choose your own adventure uh, type mentality, where it's provided, and then folks can decide if they want or, or the training or not. Um, I lean more towards mandating, just because I know that sometimes if you don't push. Um, and especially if you truly have bought into the concept that this is going to improve your business, if you don't push, uh, people may not necessarily watch that training. So learning paths are my favorite approach um, to kind of mandate and drive that uh, that training adoption. So by looking at this, you can see, you know, who is who are your internal champions and then continue to monitor progress of adoption and user understanding. Um, make that a, a goal that it's not just release into the wild and see if folks adopt it. No, but make it something that you utilize Microsoft's tools, other tools to try to see how are my people doing? And I think that some of the things that uh, we were talking about earlier, um, providing um, in some cases, deep dive sessions, uh, in some cases, fundamental sessions, um, giving people the ability to learn at their own pace and also learn at their own level, right? So you have, you know, we break it down in the clip training world into um, Essentials Power Users Pro. And that allows folks the opportunity to say, well, you know, maybe I should start with the essentials or the foundations. And it gives them the ability to decide where they're at. And they might surprise themselves. They may be further along than they think. But by giving folks options, it really helps for them to increase their understanding without the pressure of feeling like someone's watching over their shoulder. So, folks, that's what I was hoping to talk about today. Um, I'm going to conclude here. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me at jpb at cliptraining.com. And uh, if we do have any questions on the session itself a little bit later, uh, I'll be here to answer them. But I'll turn things back over now. Um, let's see. How do I stop sharing? I have to. I should watch a video about that, right? <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Brilliant. Uh, well, thanks very much, Peter. It was a really interesting session there about sort of the adoption, what we're seeing in 365. And, um, you know, I just look at our adoption score here at Cloudy, actually. It's probably a bit lower than I would have expected. So it shows you, even if you are adopting technology, there's always room for growth and improvement. And um, I, I do think there's always that eureka moment when you use technology where you, you find something that actually, you know, once you've sort of got over the initial fear of it because you didn't understand it, maybe. Uh, and you have a, you know, that, that actually this was easier than I expected and the outcome was a lot better than I expected. Um, you know, I, I will do this moving forward. Um, I don't know, it might be worth, Ryan, obviously you deliver quite a lot of training at Cloudy. Um, you know, what's the sort of eureka moments you find when you deliver training uh, for the councils we're working with? Um, I think for a lot of them, some of the 365 applications, um, things like planner and bookings, uh, there's a lot they can start to do with that within the, within the council and the community as well. Forms is another one, creating surveys uh, for, the, for the local community and sharing them out to, to gather that data and, and really start utilizing it well, so. 
Yeah, exactly. Sort of eureka moments, isn't it? These are all things that councils do all the time, and uh, it's very, it's really quite satisfying actually when we have a catch up with the council. And uh, I was chatting to a council down on the south coast just this morning, and we're having a sort of a, a catch up after a couple of years of them being with Cloudy, and they're talking about how they've been using Planner and all these other apps in the, in the council successfully, which is really great to hear. So, um, brilliant. Well, Ron, we'll come back to you a bit later on. Um, Tim. Obviously, really excited to have you come and join us next. But Peter, thank you so much for your session. Really appreciate it. And um, yeah, Tim, um, you're obviously going to speak to us today about some of the products that Team Doctor provide. And um, Team Doctor, you know, I'll, I'll let Tim explain what, what products they provide. But we've actually put it inside our learning portal for our customers to access. Uh, and Ryan will do a short example of, of that content as well. This sits as part of our modules. So this is this doesn't come as part of the package. It's a, an extra fee, uh, but it is valuable content. And uh, um, Tim will obviously talk a bit about that and obviously what he does as well. But Tim, over to you. Thanks ever so much. Thank you very much. Just do the difficult bit first, which is sharing the screen. I can't see where you see. Can you see just the, it's the coming full, up. Pres yep. the full presentation? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Right. Good. I'll just wait for me to come back on. OK, good. Right. Um, yeah, thanks very much for that, David. Good, uh, Great presentation, Peter. Very interesting and makes you feel well, inadequate, really, doesn't it? Does me how badly I use the technology that I've actually paid for. So, yeah, good, good to listen to that. <laughs> anyway, what, what I'm going to talk to you about today it's not really specifically about the, the the solution that Team Doctor offers, because you have got the opportunity to investigate that. I just really want to talk really around the topic of, of how can you ensure your people, your yourself and your team are on top form. So it's really cool well-being and engagement. But what's really important is what are the right words for you? And in, in, in some of your environments, I've, you know, I've done some work with with councils. You have varying de uh, degrees of people. You have, for example, with councillors, you have quite older people sometimes. And mental health has a bit of a stigma potentially with old people. But right across the board, so you've got to work out what are, what's the right language to use in your organisation and fend for yourself to, to when you're talking about your mental health. Um, so. My background is, is nothing to do with that at all, actually. My background is really management. I, I worked in media for many years, uh, had s some senior roles as managing director of five different businesses all across regional media. So I've worked in newspapers. I've worked in local TV, local radio. Uh, I was part of the senior team that worked for Auto Trader, went through the massive change from print to digital in, in the early 2000s. And uh, subsequent to that, I ran a, a magazine group. But during that period of change at Auto Trader, I realised the importance of engaging your team. And you know, I certainly subscribe to the, well, whilst we're talking about technology today, at the end of the day, it's the people that use that technology. Your people are your best assets and you've got to make sure that they um, and yourself are, are on top form as much as you can. So real interest in how teams works and how people um, were, were motivated and, and driven to achieve success. And then I met up with a, a company called The Sound Doctor a few years ago, and they provide online content courses and, and films for the NHS, so all accredited content around medical conditions, really. And uh, we were approached between us independently for, for content for the workplace. So clearly, um, you know, the well-being of employees has, has always been important, but really came into vogue a few years ago. Uh, and and it's it will soon, you know, whether there'll be the same emphasis on health and safety for mental health as there is for physical health, legislatively, probably not. But we are seeing um, with the amount of time it takes up, the amount of productivity it's lost, and also um, lawsuits that are, that are filed in terms of just people not just not duty of care being followed through, it's a pretty important topic that everybody needs to be aware of. So we created this, this uh, solution via Team Doctor, which is a whole host of online courses and, and film libraries, which you will have the opportunity through the IT's solution to, uh, to have a look at. 
And, um, you know, we, we get some good feedback on it. And we, we're very proud, actually, of the content we've got. We've got some real experts in the field. And you're going to hear from from one of those experts today, Sir Kerry Cooper, who is the um, he's a professor at Manchester University. And he's also the um, president of the Charters Institute of Professional Development. I'm going to briefly talk about what, what is poor mental health, the common causes and, and the importance of that line manager, that's my kind of emphasis today, is the importance of the line manager in, in our well-being. Um, hopefully this video will play and um, you'll be able to hear it. When we talk about the common mental disorders, they are made up of three things. Just the stress you experience where it's excessive pressure on you. Then there's anxiety, which is a clinical condition and it's a range of responses. You're gonna be very, very anxious clinically and need real help, uh, psychopharmacological as well as the psychotherapeutic. And then there's depression where you feel low. Um, so they are slightly different, but they're a part of the same syndrome, which is called the common mental disorders. And we're not talking here about endogenous uh, illness like schizophrenia or bipolar. It's, this is that's different. That's a smaller proportion of people suffer from that. But for the common mental disorder, the majority of us, one time or another, will get those. One in four of us will get it in our lifetime. So that's the key point there. One in four of us are going to have an issue with our mental health, whether that's that we feel depressed or whether it's just that we don't feel quite as good about ourselves as we should do. And so. With that backstop, what are the key causes in the workplace? When we talk about the common mental I think the most important aspect of stress at work, there's a lot of things that could trouble you. you have, unmanageable workloads are just huge and deadlines to meet and all of that. So that a lot of us face. I think the thing that causes the most potential damage is your relationship with your boss and or your colleagues. If they are bad or you're in a culture of a long hours culture, there's no way I can walk out before six, seven o'clock at night or in a culture that's command and control. You have no autonomy and control over your work. Those are the things that cause the most trouble. But a lot of those is about to be your line manager. So that's Professor Sir Kerry Cooper there talking about actually it's about your colleague and your line manager. They're, they are the key drivers. And I suspect most people on today's webinar will have some responsibility for another member of staff. Not least you've got responsibility for yourself. So it's really important that you, you know, you really are aware. So let's hear what uh, Sir Kerry has to say about what you can do about it. I think the most important some reason, aspect of stress is there's got, a lot of things that could trouble you. Because I've got two screens going here. It's just huge and deadlines to meet. And I apologise. Can I get this? There is a recipe for a uh, a good well-being culture. It is having line managers from shop floor to top floor who have social interpersonal skills, EQ, who are good people managers. One that people are allowed to work flexibly, that people are not managed by fault finding, but by praise and reward. Although if you do something wrong, giving them useful feedback, constructive feedback about what they did rather than say, that's your fault. What did you do that for? It's the way you manage human beings. Also, I think it's about giving people manageable workloads, um, getting good work-life balance, um, um, deadlines that are, are reasonable and achievable, uh, making sure their work is clear and really important is give them a c control and autonomy at work. The more you do that, the more they feel trusted. So let's just have a little look at what are the key causes of poor mental health in the workplace. So, so Perry's talked there about a you know, poor relationship with the boss, poor relationship with colleagues. Workload is, is an important factor as well. And having too little to do can be just as bad as having too much to do. So that's a really interesting uh, phenomenon 
often people just assume that um, poor mental health is driven by high workloads, but actually it can be um, the, the opposite to that just as much. Having no control or autonomy. Now, of course, that you've, but this isn't about not achieving objectives. As a manager, you've clearly got to ensure that the objectives of your organisation, your week, your day, the, the projects you're working on, whatever, have to be delivered. Now that, that's a, that's a, a prerequisite. That has to happen. But if we don't look after the individuals within our, our team, then ultimately we become too task focused and we end up having these major problems. So we've clearly got to make sure there's a degree of control, but where there's opportunities to devolve control and autonomy, it's incredibly powerful and really, really important to do that. That links obviously to, to not being overmanaged. The converse of being undermanaged, which is that uh, having too much to do, having too little to do. But giving people autonomy, allowing them to work to reasonable deadlines that clearly, you know, will deliver the project, but allowing them to organise their own workload once you've invested in them so that they have the capability to do that is the, is the recipe that, that we're looking for here. Poor work, working environment um, is so important. We've had a massive spike in terms of poor mental health during COVID and post-COVID with home working. Um, if you're not lucky enough to have a, a home office, you know, if you're working from some people work from their bedroom, some people work from the kitchen table with no nothing that could be done about that. It was a government directive. But of course, a lot of organisations and maybe a lot, a lot of your people are still working remotely, maybe you're still working remotely. So it's not just about an office environment, it's taking the holistic view of the environment. Promotional opportunities, it's really interesting that the two key drivers of people's motivation is one, alignment to purpose, so that what they feel that what they're doing relates to the overall purpose of the organisation of the team. And secondly, that they feel they're learning and growing. Now, that doesn't always have to result in tangible promotional opportunities, but there needs to be an opportunity for people to grow. Of course, um, the, the current uh, economic and political climate is causing quite a lot of insecurity and organisations are changing. So clearly that's a, a major issue as well. And then there's just the poor man management side of, of harassing and bullying. So what I wanted to do really there was just to, to bring to the fore the issues that affect poor mental health in the workplace and the importance of, of, the, um, of the line manager. What we can then do through um, the content that you have available through um, the Cloudy IT portal, portal is to really get into the, the, the detail of what are the symptoms of poor mental health so we can recognize them in the workplace. We emphasize really what I've covered there about the causes and then we can start to improve upon that with um, some useful hints and tips and um, clearly um, it's getting people to think about the structure of their working day, the process that they have in place that might be causing some of these issues but then some of the more softer issues particularly around emotional intelligence. Uh, we have some content on that and then that then develops into really helping people identify what their training and development needs are that if we can't deliver them through the online portal there's um references to where that training can be done and, and we at team doctor can help uh, in that further training as well so i hope um i hope that's just stimulated you to think about your well-being and if you are a manager about how you manage people and the importance of the well-being within your team do um, please have a look at the content that there is on the portal. Um, hopefully uh, it's easy to access, access and you, you, know, you really find it useful and uh, very happy to take any questions. I'll stop sharing. I do apologise about the clunkiness of that. I'm not sure why that was, um, but hopefully uh, that was coherent. Over to you, uh, David, and thank you very much. Excellent. Uh, well, thank you, Tim. Um, you know, we're a really big fan of the work that Team Doctor are doing, which is why we, we spoke to yourself, reached out, and we wanted to put your content in our in our portal um, and provide it to our, our councils to assist them with, 
you know, dealing with the, the real sad implications of mental health at work. And it's you know, so important to take those on board and, and, and address your workforce, not just technically, but also mentally as well. So um, so Tim's content is available in the learning platform. It's not available as standards. It's a module that's that's added to or bought. Um, but Ryan will give you a quick to uh, guided tour of all of that now. But Tim, thanks ever so much. Really good to hear from you. We'll do some Q&A at the end if anyone's got any questions. Um, and uh, Ryan, I suppose we'll bring yourself in now uh, to basically give people a bit of guided tour around the portal. If you're a cloudy customer, you should be able to find this and Ryan will, will signpost you to how to find it. It should look uh, pretty much how Ryan shows you. If you're not a cloudy customer, we do offer a free trial. Um, so yeah, Clark, uh, Ryan, over to you. Thanks, David. I just may share my screen. So perfect. Hopefully everyone can can see that okay yeah, come um, yeah perfect that's great okay yeah so first of all um how do we find the uh, cloudy hub um so if you're uh, already a um cloudy client um you should find in teams uh, down the left hand side you will see the cloudy hub um logo we can click on there um when you first click on this oh i'm already logged in perfect uh, when you first click on it if you haven't been to it before there will be a microsoft 365 login button in the center of the screen you shouldn't need any credentials uh, you should just need to click on that once and it will always take you um, to a dashboard similar to this um, if you're um, not with cloudy for support you don't have a, a teams tenant with us for example um, you can still um uh, purchase the, the Cloudy Learning Hub. Um, you can gain access very quickly by visiting uh, cloudyit.co.uk. And if we look to the top left here, we've got this uh, Cloudy Learning Hub and compliance um, logo. If we click on there, that will take you away to your login screen. When you log in this way, you will be provided with credentials um, for you to sign in. Um, so that very quickly covers um, just, just the basics of logging in. Um, so now just a, a little overview around the Learning Hub itself. Um, so when you first open up the Learning Hub, you will see um, your My Training dashboard. So you can see here you've got some stats on, on how much you've increased your skill level and so on. Um, for most people, depending on your role within the council, um, Cloudy have set up learning paths. Um, for you. Um, these learning paths include courses um, that we feel uh, and have identified as being um, key to Microsoft 365 and its adoption. Like I say, they, they differ depending on your role within the council. Um, when you go into these courses, you'll see the courses that are laid out for you and you can go through and, and fill them out. Um, there are some um, there is some gamification to this as well. So you can see that you've got your, your progress bar. As you start completing the courses, you can see as well all of these courses are, are reasonably short. Um, the, the overall training time, for example, um, might be half an hour or an hour. Uh, that doesn't mean by any means that you need to find that amount of time to, to come in and um, do some training. You can literally come in and, and you know, if you've got five or ten minute break and you want to, you can come and do a couple of courses, leave off and then come back to it at a later point. And then at the end, you've got this quiz. Um, so as I said, there's some gamification in here as well. Um, when you have completed a quiz, um, you will get a, a certificate. Um, under my training, you can go to achievements. Um, and in here, you'll be able to see all of the certificates and, and badges that you started um, collecting as you go through the courses. Um, so as well as the learning paths, you have a course got a course library. Um, so in here you will see your your main courses. Um, as David was saying as well, uh, we have additional modules that can be purchased. One of those, um, as, as Tim was just going through, is, is from the Team Doctor. Uh, if we click into there, you'll see some really fantastic courses in here on mental health and, and well-being. Um, so really good uh, module there. It's laid out in the same way. Um, so you can go into these, you can do them in, you can see sort of the longest course there is about six minutes. So again, real nice uh, bite-sized courses um, that you can do in your own time. Um, uh, in addition to the, uh, the course library um, um, and the uh, campaigns that we've set up for you. Um, you have also got the ability to search for lessons. Um, so let's say, for example, um, you're trying to find out how to do something in OneNote. Uh, we can simply search OneNote. And this will give us a result of every single OneNote um, course that is available within the um, Cloudy Learning Hub. And again, because they're nice bite-sized courses, 
um, generally what you will find is that in most cases there's going to be something that's very spe specific to what you're trying to do, which is great because it means you can pick up what you're trying to do in a matter of minutes rather than having to scroll through you know, a, a half hour video, for example. Um, so in addition to, um, to, to the courses that are already set up for you, um, you can, uh, with the content creation tool, you can create your own training courses. So you may want to build some out um, that are specific to the council or specific to some of the roles in the council. Um, this is only a quick overview, so I'm not going to show you how to do it right from scratch, uh, but this is just to demonstrate how easy they are to set up. Um, so if we go to add a lesson, we simply get this screen here. We can give our, our lesson a name. We can select the source as well. So um, what, what we're going to embed so you can embed a, a video. You can preload a document, for example. Um, you can provide a short transcription. Uh, denote how long the viewing time is as well. Um, and then add in any keywords and click save. If you were, for example, going to add so something like a, a video, you can take videos from YouTube. If you find one that you think actually this would be great for uh, training I'm trying to do in my colleagues, I'm going to set up a, a lesson on this. Uh, just to show you, um, for some of you that might not be aware how to get that iframe code, it is very straightforward to do. If I go to um, YouTube quickly, this is a training video we've got on uh, telephony in Microsoft Teams. If I just hover over with my mouse over the video itself and right click, um, we can see we get this copy embed code. We just simply click on there. Go back to go away. Sorry. Go back to our, our tab here and um, and paste that code in. And now when we save this, that will embed the video into our training course. So as well as the um, content creation manager, um, another addition we have um, in the Cloudy Learning Hub uh, and compliance manager is um, policy manager. Uh, and I really wanted to take the time to show you this today because this is, is proving really popular, um, especially with our council clients. It's, it's really useful. Um, so uh, your health and safety policies and things like that that, that people need to sign um, either when they join the company or potentially even on a on an annual basis, um, you can build out your, your own policies in here. Um, there are templates, there are ones that are in here already for you to use, um, or again, much like the course library, um, you, you can build out your, your own as well. And again, this is just to, to quickly demonstrate how, how straightforward it, it is and, and the sort of things you can do. Um, so you can see here, I'm going to create one on hazardous substances. I can select which category it should be in, so workplace safety. You can even customise this with your own colours and upload your own council logo as well. With your content, again, you can include a video. Um, you can simply copy and paste text into here as well if you've already got a document and you just want to paste it straight in. Um, or you can upload a, a PDF as well. Um, so I could select my hazardous substances PDF and drop that in. Um, if you tick all three boxes, you can even have all, all three elements in here as well. So you could have a video and your PDF if you wanted to. Um, then obviously the most important bit is, is for confirmation. Um, so the fantastic thing with this is you can um, ask some questions as well. So you can make sure that people are reading or watching the content that you've provided. Um, so you can see here I've, I've pre-made a, um, a question. Which of these appears on the harmful substances list? So we've got water, flowers, bulbs, fruit and vegetables, and paper and cardboard. We just need to, to put a little mark next to the one that is the right answer. Um, and then when people select that, if they get it right, um, we can decide what type of signature they put, put either just a, a tick box to say, yep, I've read it, or we can ask them to, to type in their name as well. If they were to get this wrong, it would ask them to go back and, and read the content again. Uh, so you can set up your recipients. So the default would be to send it to, to all, but if you just want it to go to certain um, groups of people, you can. Um, you can send out, uh, you can, sorry, um, customise the, the default email that goes out to people. Um, and finally as well, um, this bit's great because you can ask for just a one-time signature or you can set up to um, automatically renew. So you can say from um, the last signature, so if a new starter starts in a year's time, it will automatically send them an email again, asking them to sign it again. Or we can do an annual renewal for everyone and decide what date um, that is on. 
Uh, once you've done that, save and publish and, and off it will go to people or you can schedule um, the start date as well. So that's just a very quick um, overview of um, some of the things that are available in the in the Cloudy Learning and Compliance Hub. Um, we do also have um, furthermore um, than, than just the, the, the hub itself. Um, we do offer um, events and training. Um, so when this loads for me, um, there are a number of, of courses that we're running at Cloudy IT. Um, for Cloudy clients, um, the majority of them are free. There are a couple of paid for. Um, for people that aren't clients of ours, um, there is just a, a small fee. Uh, the average is about £20 um, per course. Um, but yeah, there's lots of lots of training courses in here as well. So if you visit um, for Cloudy IT forward slash events and training, you can take a look and potentially look onto one of those that's coming up. Brilliant, Ryan. Well, thank you so much. Um, really appreciate it. And uh, um, you know, the the adoption of digital skills and organisation is a it's not a straightforward approach. We've been doing this for quite a few years, and um, as everyone's aware, you know, trying to uh, implement all these with the different sort of makeup of your colleagues, etc., can always be quite difficult. But uh, what we've come up with, we believe, is a really good approach to it, and um, you know, we're keen to support you and your councils as much as possible and help you with that deployment. So uh, whether it's content or the the, the resources online, uh, or colleagues like Ryan or Peter or Tim, we're all here to support you. Um, but we're, we're just finishing in time, which is really good, so I'm glad. But um, uh, before we all shoot off, is there any questions? Questions at all from anyone? There is one in the chat, David, from from Kevin Bacon. Okay, yeah, great. Um, any pain if I need to an idea? Source thermal. Excellent. Okay, uh, thanks, Kevin. Um, so. Um, we, we do have some resources. I mean, the, the, the learning library can be just for one person or for a, a whole organisation. Um, so uh, it, it can be available for just one. And actually, we are starting to work with the ALCs around that to uh, look at some sort of model for, for them to distribute it to their members as well, potentially. And uh, we know everyone is really focused on learning and development and digital, digital skills is one component of that. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. But um, thanks, Jane, for the feedback. Really useful. And uh, we'll catch up soon. But, um, well, if anyone does want to reach out after the conference, uh, we'll send out an email. Conference. I'm, I'm talking like it's the SLCC conference. I mean, webinar. Um, but uh, do reach out. We'll send out a link to Ryan's booking link uh, so you can book a short session with Ryan. He'll be happy to give you a personalised overview of the, of the platform. Uh, we can also make available the content from Tim for a short period of time for you to evaluate, see what you think. Um, but um, otherwise, thank you so much for taking time out your busy schedules to join us. We really appreciate it. Uh, Peter and Tim, thank you so, so much for coming to join us. I know we're going to be doing another session early in the new year uh, and inviting it out to our customers as well. Um, but otherwise, uh, please do enjoy the rest of your days and we'll catch up with you very soon. So goodbye. Good to be with everyone.